I see you all the time with the camera. <laughs> Everyone now has a camera. Mm -hmm. I use my phone, but I, I, I think I'm mm, the same way I make movies because I'm a really forgetful person, so I always try to remember. Always. Um, which is quite against what I should, which is to be in the present and to not attach to memory, but somehow the movies are always about memory, about trying to hold on to things. <laughs> so, you think what we saw once, and we just wanted to keep it. How do you make an order between the scenes? What do you want to forget? What do you want to keep? But the thing is, for the past few years, I try to look at filmmaking as um, you know a process of making that matter, that like trying to recreate certain memory or or activate some spaces, yeah. And and the making is very precious because it's not reality, it's to simulate reality, to make this lighting and framing stuff. Yeah. And so the finished film is like a a corpse. It's no longer a matter for me. It's a, it becomes another reality for different people. So uh, maybe it's, it's an excuse, maybe this reasoning, because it's, it's not, in a way, it's not really trying to hold on to this memory, but just recreate the pleasure of recreating. Yeah. And, and then just let it go. Yeah. If I remember, you study field. I study, uh, yeah. And before that, I study architecture in this town. Yeah. And film in Chicago was uh, a shock because in the school it was for experimental film. So it's all about something that you can do by yourself and it's about uh, Stan Brackish. Um, can you hear me? Uh, about Stan Brackish, about Maya Darren, and about uh, Bruce Belly and all this Andy Warhol, yeah. And then during the um, time there, there's on another side which is the film center, where they play. That time is a big uh, Iranian cinema, yeah. So Kirostami uh, and the rest, and, and that moment, people, you know, I think filmmakers are asking about the line between reality and fiction, yeah. Iranian scene. And also uh, the, a lot of new Taiwanese cinema. Yeah. And also I went to uh, the seven hours of a Hungarian filmmaker <laughs> <laughs> with intermission. And afterwards I, I feel like stupid. I feel like death, walk around, like a zombie. Um, so you're part of that, and and you should. Sure. No, that that's the that's the time that I absorbed like a hungry person. Like, I never test this experimental films, like scratch film, abstract film, and narrative film in different way. Yeah. yeah and it's I think the question is obvious. What do you think about the story or storytelling or what this means the story? For you, um, I I think a lot about story uh, because uh, it's uh, how you say yeah. when you even when you make experimental film is the story, but it's more free. I mean, it's just, you have your own story, you have your own reasoning uh, when you look at. Um, let's say um, abstract picture, um, 
you know, splash of colors of their stories in it. Yeah. But the story the human just, brain created yeah. this connection and the connections became story by the end. Right, exactly. So so I, I like that in, in cinema that is so physical, you know, it's so subjective also that that you you um, how do you say have this representation or representation of things but at the same time with time you can create another story or other stories uh, within the audience mind. Yeah. So stories. Yeah. Um, I will finish very quickly but I have something that I think we have to touch it. Uh, surely one thing is yeah, we are creating stories because you know, just between this glass and this the bottle we have a story. And uh, but of course we don't want to talk about the stories because the stories are all the time the same. Don't you see? No, I think stories are always shifting. Always, uh, memories always shifting. Our bodies always shifting, and and uh, especially I think you and I, you know, uh, from the history of the country, you know, what's this, in the school or what was on the media, and the reality or not, we don't know. You know, the new information coming, and you you know uh, what you learn in school are uh, propaganda, for example. Suddenly, you know. It become fiction, and so so this kind of shift that I'm, I'm interested in, and the same way with ghosts, you know, the ghost is my reality in the past, but then it's not. So all this thing is a shift thing. Yeah. Mm. You are using the words memories and ghosts. I was thinking, and I was watching, two things. One is about the tenderness. You are a very tender person. How you are watching the people, it's very tender, soft, touching them carefully, full of love. Because I think it's because I work with these people I love, you know, the actors and everything. So, and when I write story, there's it's not intentional, you know. Mostly there's no bad guy or there's no evil, but it's the emotion side and and. Uh, also, also my stubbornness that you know I, I don't need the conflict or some this obvious uh, black and white or good and bad to, to play in my movie. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's come like that. So so what I gather in my notebooks and all this thing is all about beauty or, or sadness or something that I, I like. So this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, apropos, uh, how could you find this amazing lady? Her name is Jane. Jane, yes. And now I'm studying Thai. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, uh, she, she, I know her in 2001 when she came to uh, to deliver um, the photograph of. Uh, talents uh, during the casting of one film and I'm looking for a woman between um, 20 to 30 something and uh, she was late 40 at the time and she always insert her picture and so I was like, oh, okay who is this auntie and she always uh, and she's worked in many jobs and one of them is this you know working for a talent agency yeah and so she always had her picture again and again. Oh, I don't need you. And then so she hung around and, just, and so I changed the script 
to feed her, and I found a lot of story from her. I learned a lot from her. Uh, and the fact that she was born in the same region as me, and I was more privileged, you know, growing up in the doctor's family, and she was not, and she was uh, in the region near the Mekong River. So a lot of memories there that she she taught me, and she remembers so much. And I don't, so so it's like <laughs> it become a, a, a friend, teacher, figure as well. Yeah, from the perspective that this again not in the classroom, you know about the, the communists and all this, uh, the war of love, the neighbor, and that affected the border of Thailand. And, and, yeah. So, you know what I was thinking. You are creating really big tension, even if nothing is happening. Just when I saw her the third time, or hundredth time, to crossing the frame, my heart is broken. And because yeah, it's somehow it's around the tenderness or the love or uh, something. I think uh, this is somehow the main issue of the filmmaking, to love the people. Right. And the beauty also, I mean, the beauty doesn't have to be physical beauty, but like your film, you know, it, it can be many other brutality. You know, but, but that's to make you aware of of life, the fragility of life. You know, that's Can we life. say human dignity? <laughs> sure, <laughs> you will. Yes. Yeah, because this is my uh, basic <laughs> issue, and I think it's the reason why we are touching the camera uh, somewhere on this. But again, why? Do you want to do another movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like yesterday, uh, like like with Carlos, no, the day before. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was still excite me. Still, I told you this in the class because it's it's not uh, in the beginning. I treat cinema very like God, like on the pedestal and. And experimental film or that is is all this thing that um, you follow and you 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 obey or something like that. But uh, for the past few years, I, I become like working with many other media, other forms of different frames or no frame. But and then you know and the the issues of reality and present and body make me think of cinema as something not so trustful. Yeah. And suddenly it's not anymore so high. It become maybe just normal and 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 cinema always provoke me. Always, you know kind of it's like some voodoo or some magic that I cannot solve and it's like a, an animal that uh at least me want to tame it maybe. To, to, to shoot it and, and I say that it's impossible to tame it. I mean, there's no formula. Even Hollywood film, like what that amount of money going to, how many people, Hollywood film still flops. You know? So there's no way you can tell if this work or not. <coughs> so that's the, that's the something that bugs me or that, that keep me going to this. Yeah. Which is something amazing because it's so simple. It's just light and <laughs> just flat, and, but still. Yeah. I'm just thinking about okay, we are doing pictures, and you are very visual, and everything is picture. Even if sometimes I have a feeling, fuck off, I did not move a little bit more with your camera, but uh, it's a picture. 
And it's more picture than story, of course, between two pictures, we are making stories. And uh, the question is, really, honestly, would you tell me why did you cut so early this most beautiful love scene, but what? Where? when uh, the two women, when she's oh. kissing her, why did you cut it? I, I, I wanted didn't. to see it longer. I didn't. She just woke up. She woke up. She <laughs> 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 really, really. I, I just feel that, I mean, this, we need this interruption. Yeah. We, we need this to, uh, how you say? Um, Actually, she woke up twice, actually, if you notice. She woke up and then she woke up again. And she's, she's like dreaming of dreaming. And maybe she's still dreaming again, <laughs> so she tried to open the wide eyes. But, but um, for me, it's about this uh, maybe confusion or, or this thing, of the interruption of time, of, yeah, of suddenly space. It's stuck up. We have to talk about the time. But it's so ridiculous, we are talking about the time. Uh, but I think it's a serious question, because uh, usually uh, the films and the dramaturgy or something like that, they are ignoring the time, uh, or real time. And uh, the logic of the films is action cut, action cut or information card, information card. And uh, what is your logic? Um, I wish my editor is here because he, he really a big factor also. Um, first he followed the script and then he um, tried to, you know, to, to feel, you know, together. And sometimes he's confused. He wrote to me and I sent him the session. And it's impossible to, I mean, the time um, is so, sometimes when you work, it's always shifting when I'm making, this is for the student, I mean, to, when you cut it on the laptop or, or small screen it, and you project this different time again, as you know, and when you have sound, it's different sound, time again with sound, you know, so, so it's about, uh, luckily, for our studio, there's uh, editing and then sound on the top floor. So there's like back and forth sending me and try to project big. And, and, but, but mostly it's about, uh, it's of course cinematic time and how you evoke that mm -hmm. in the audience as well. To, yeah. I don't want to bore you. Uh, Question. You said uh, there is always story, but I just have some question. Uh, do you think that in your culture there is different perception of the story than in the Western society? For example, you speak about soldier or shooting wounded people, but there is no war, there is no wounding, there is no story turning to sightsee, there is no obvious meaning of the things. There is something hidden. This first question. And the question you are speaking a lot of I think there is a lot of mythology, irrationality, dreaming. But what is surprised me, it is not something mm, I don't know is this your thing, it's your you wanted to make this. It is not something like what you can see in a movie of Parajano, irrational dream, dreaming, thinking, mythical because by Parajano because he discovered tradition. But here tradition is completely empty. It is very boring, very, they are dreaming, but there is not connection with tradition. It is empty world in some sense, which nothing, uh, nothing happening. So in strange way you connect this kind of, nothing happening and your tradition for me. Or maybe you can, I would, I would love to- For me a lot of things happen. <laughs> But uh, I just think that, uh, what's the first question? 
I don't know what's the tradition. I mean, Thailand is quite a young country, but we have so many influence from different empires. And I think like many parts of the world, we have a myth and legend and the storytelling is, is strikingly familiar, you know, with family, a similarity between the tales, you know. It's the same way as fabric, when you look at fabric, yeah. Texture, uh, uh, textile, I mean, the pattern of one culture of, and to another culture, let's say in South America, is really sometimes the same pattern. So I don't know what happened, but you know. Uh, so, storytelling, uh, I think, is, is quite similar in terms of structure and protagonist stuff. Uh, but I was born in the time where everything is mixed and especially science fiction and all these things come in and influence with cinema, language come in. In Thailand, we, we all, all uh, how do you say, influence uh, and even have something like a black exploitation movie in Thailand, it's just a paint black face, you know, just to simulate the American, American. Mm. trend that time, you know. So uh, for me, the language is, is always the mix. And, and but I, uh, like like many people, struggling with you know what is your national cinema. And for me, it doesn't exist. It's just your cinema because you are a body of all these influences from Tar to from Ozu to Brazil yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So we just continue to pass on this DNA of language and. What's the second question? About boring well, thing? Well, <laughs> I just <laughs> that your empty meaning of tradition, there is something different. Well, if I've connected, you said Ozu, it is very similar for me, like what's make Ozu and you, this kind of different concept of the time. It is obvious that Ozu, there is Japanese feeling of the time, the space, you know. Everything, there is meaning when the one, one thing's happening near an actor, yeah. Uh, just one uh, glass of water, but have same meaning like the face of the actor. So this, what you have, the concept of the time, very for me Oriental. If I can say something, but same way there is lot of you know, I can say something empty space, lot of technology, lot of uh, repetition, lot of uh, in, um, in the space of the hospital, uh, also a lot of industry, lot of there is no natural landscape. You know, usual image what we have about the Thailand. You know. I just uh, want to tell you a very short, very briefly, my, uh, when I was first time in Japan, it was 1984, and uh, that time Japan, it was totally different than now. Uh, an old Japanese professor took me to a museum or gallery, and then it was a picture. And the picture, it was white, just two black points. And this old professor told me, you came from a Western country. For you, surely, uh, this picture about these two black points, this is your story. Our story is the white. And uh, you know, when I got this, and after when I saw the first no theater in my life, nine hours. We are just amateurs. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's told me very clearly uh, somewhere the ministry is somewhere else, you know. You have to learn to listen for the world, to understand the world, and of course, transforming and telling. Sorry, but it just came to me. <laughs> I'm still in the... <laughs> no, no, I was remembering my experience with no, and I was... Yes. <laughs> Destroyed, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know the the idea of time and the 
there's nothing is there's nothing is is what Bella talk about the void which is which is the, not the void is the void that is a space yeah. that is part of you know um, uh, how you say um, what I call a quality space yeah uh, you you have the frame and the time and uh, I mean the duration and the size of the frame and what happened there uh, it takes the quality and sometimes it's, it's no quality in the, let's say long take or something but uh, for me I, I try to activate certain things or certain element um, yeah that's all I can say yeah. Um, can I yeah. you have to for me, uh, it's also about this density of the image, of the each image, uh, for, for this uh, trust or uh, responsibility for the each image. So when I watch, and you, you, you were talking with students, so I heard you saying how, how each image is rooted, is rooted either in your personal experience, so it's in your childhood or the, in the place where you were born, or, or in a memory related to the mythology, archaeology, or so it doesn't matter is it um, like that or not, but somehow when, whenever I see each of your image, I trust, trust each image because of the, the, the strength of, of, the, of the everything, of the composition, of the density, of the, of the layers. So for me, it's a, uh, I see this richness in this layering of the, for instance, story, storytelling, which is always a little bit, uh, I will use the word because I don't know how, which you, word could I use. It's, it's not deconstructed, but it's, you know, like exquisite corpse. It's completely separated. And when we mention Japanese theater, which, which can be boomerang war, it's also about the separation of elements, that everything uh, forms the density. It's not the question. <laughs> I forgot who said this word is, is, is saying that my time is not your time. No, I have only one time. Yeah. I can tell you what time is it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's that, you know, we, we have different time uh, perception uh, in movie as well and in reality. No, uh, the question is for the listener, you know, Tanya, when you are capable to focus in and understanding what is happening in front of you. And it's, it's not depending by the time. It's a question of the sensibility. And this guy really fucked up by the sensibility. He has, uh, he has huge, incredible sensibility. And, you know, just to feel you. That's what you cannot teach, you cannot learn. You have to born. No. Yeah? Okay, finally, we do not agree. <laughs> Let's go. No, no, you, you, you have to find it. You, you. There's a practice and there's a thing that you can, or like when you, you've been transformed by a powerful artwork or powerful event in your life, and you transform. And then, um, I, I really don't say this because you are here, but to be with you for these past few days really inspired me and very, very changed something. Because I think for me, I always have different layers, you know, but for you, uh, you are so not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, I got it. <laughs> See? I got and, it. And big step. But like Tala said, you know, in, in Asia it's true, you, you have so many layers of conduct and all this thing, and, but at the same time in cinema you have to be true 
to herself to make it. So there's this conflict going on. And yeah, so that, that's just an example of uh, some powerful, uh, either a person or experience, cinema, whatever, that, that can shift and awaken something in you. Maybe this is the reason why I really don't want to do the normal ones. Well, that's the reason why I don't want to do the <laughs> Maybe someone has a question. Maybe you can share the experience of what transformed you, the moment that you're transformed, or struck you or why you want to be a filmmaker or something like that. Please didn't. Yeah. I was wondering actually what's the purpose of the movies? Why should you make them? So so is it for example to flash the light um, from different perspective to find some sort of uh, motion that you cannot uh, um, achieve by other means. So, and I'm also interested uh, about, for example, your growing up in that city, and how did you transform those feelings about your surrounding into the movie scripts and the story and that experience? And could you tell us something about the Thai uh, cinematography? So, and. Uh, uh, in, in, the, in your society, is it influential? What sort of movies do people watch? Um, I think there's two points. Like, I think that we make movie and why we watch movie, why we make movie. And I think we, we, we watch movie because we need to. We need to uh, for uh, biological purpose. When, when I'm just junk, you know? <laughs> yes, it's the same way when people need drugs. And uh, when you sleep, you know, you have the dream in the darkness of your closed eyes, and you you have vision, you know. And, and the dream, you have, you know, stages of four four stages, you know, REM and whatnot. And in in the night, you know, it's um, ninety minutes each loop, you know, and that's the cinema time. So the, I think that cinema is really evolved from from that the duration of cinema, except you. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so we need to go to the dark in, from our cave time. You know, we play with lights, we play with illusion. We need to, you know, with shadows. Yeah, and the same way we need to be in this dark in this cave to be able to experience light in the dark and let ourselves go to. Uh, this need of the brain for certain information, like like the way we need to dream, yeah. And I think it make humanity like evolve, yeah. And the way that I why I want to make film is um, is to I don't know to to get rid of something to to exor exorcist uh, the ghost maybe and to like I said to recreate certain thing that I cannot shake off and try to let it pass. Yeah. And about my childhood is um, I think what what's the most important time of childhood is time for me. I grew up in this hospital and always uh, hang out in the hospital area where people were waiting, people are so so the time and reflecting you know, the place of birth and death and sickness and but as a kid I, I didn't think about all this thing but I can sense I could sense it time you know some more like slow motion and, and I appreciate this moment and color and smell and all this. Yeah. So smell yeah. Comment? Wish. Wish. Maybe 
No, but what's wrong with the subtitle in the last part? I guess. Do I ask? No, no, I don't know. <laughs> but but I do. It's a, it's a kind of like a, 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 a poem, maybe? Or, you know, this guy, he's talking about the wall or the mountain thing that, mm -hmm. uh, that's so beautiful that it's almost like the mountain needs to be big so that when it falls, you know, the water, it, it's a spectacle, it's, 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 a, it's a beauty. So the higher, the bigger, the, the better, the better uh, uh, catastrophe. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing, yeah. And, and that happened because I think in Thailand, in many other periods, when the empire is falling down, it's like a big animal. That is trashing around, you know, the leg, the tails. So the grass around is demolished, and people around are demolished before the big animal dies. So, yeah. and I think that's happening in Thailand, yeah, and in many other places. History, yeah. And your king died. Oh, yes, not <laughs> really. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but um, do you want to explain why this is the last film at home and what, where you want to go from here? I want to go to South America because I feel I feel the energy every time. I, when I'm in Europe, I don't feel anything. <laughs> really. <laughs> in South America, there, there's a, uh, a lot of, I don't know, the, the the energy and I'm fascinated by uh, colonialism. Um, the fact that in, in Thailand there's no colonization, uh, but around Thailand always, you know, occupy French, British, uh, South, Spanish. Um, but there's a lot of internal colonization going on, a lot of violence, yeah. So, but in South America, it's, it's also, uh, of course, you know, it's a kind of this, this memory or this civilization that's been wiped out. Yeah. So I, I really like that and also the, um, the healing tradition that I'm interested in and the issue of perception and time. You know, in the, the ancient way of using whatever drugs or leaves or something. That I think is also linked with what I do in Thailand. Um, also, the, the 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 idea of nature. Yeah. In Thailand, we have quite a, a big uh, novel about romantic thing in the jungle and the animals. But in fact, a lot of that writings, those writings, were influenced from this uh, this people from the U.S. or Europe to go to South America and romanticize the jungle. Yeah. So again, like like movie, the writing also influenced from that. So I think just going to the Amazon or something is like a source. Okay. But, but that's the first idea, but I don't know what it will take me. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, we have to say a really big thanks for you. Thanks for your coming. Thanks for your help. Thanks for the movie. Thanks for everything. And I really would like to say also a big thanks for all of you, for your attention. I would like to say a special thanks for Nero and the meeting point, the crew, and everybody who was helping us. And of course, uh, I have to say thanks for the SSST University and see you somewhere else.
Thank you very much.